Well, with the scenery on the river valley almost there, I've decided to move further up the hill. And I've started to ponder a question that poor old Fred here has been pondering. How does he get down from his house? But since I decided to put this hill stroke mountain scene on the back of the layout to hide the fiddle yard and put buildings on it, I have pondered how the people of this world would reach the buildings. The church isn't so bad because it goes off scene and we can imagine that there's a path coming from the main entrance here through the graveyard that meets the more level road just off scene. The house, however, or should I say the cottages, well, we've got a little bit more of a problem here. And if we take uh, little Fred, assuming he's around six feet in height, if we measure him up to the front of this face here, he's about three and a half threads tall. That is an official unit of measurement, by the way. We will be using threads from now on. That is roughly around 21 feet of slate to cut into for two sets of stairs to come from the front doors. Not a very practical solution, and if I was building this house in a real world sort of view, I'd be looking for a cheaper way to get that path and steps in towards the front doors. Therefore, I would build a path going round the front here to the smallest area that these steps, which is this part here, which would lead down to the row. So that's how I'm going to do it. So I've roughly marked out a small line down here where I'm going to cut the steps out. Um, it's quite soft there, so I don't think I'm going to have too much difficulty cutting it. And then I think I will shape it with card for the steps. I'm just going to test how much it uh, cuts away first. Yeah, that's nice and easy. I think I might start cutting some steps. Well, I've been away from the layout for about a week or so, and I've been thinking about it, and I think that the green door needs some steps, rather than sharing a pathway with their neighbours, because they've got a very small back garden, uh, which has also been now taken up by the privies, which I've now built and put at the back. So I've got a different method that I'm going to try for this set of steps. So I've calculated the size of uh, the area required for the steps. So this would be the top here and this is the bottom of the road. And then I've given three mil height and across because I'm going to use this balsa wood. I'm going to cut it into strips and then I'm going to glue them as uh, two at a time uh, and basically build it as you would with uh, Lego. Or so I used to build stairs of Lego anyway. So it'd be two blocks there, then the next block on top of that block, and so on and so forth, going up along this uh, template until I have a set of stairs. So I'm going to give it a try.
Okay, so the steps have been glued together and I've been thinking about it. And I know this house here has some steps here, but I think, you know, for the convenience of getting to the station, they probably could share these steps and have them down the middle and then they each have a gate either side. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna roughly have them about here. So I need to mark that out with my knife and uh, basically start hacking away. So, measurement of the steps, they should just be over a centimetre now. So yeah, it's about 1.1. Oh, I roughly want 1.1 about here. It's roughly in the middle. We'll go with the gutter in actually, there we are, down the middle. There we are, I'm at the six mil mark, that'll do. So, yeah, cut out from there. Cut out from there. Here we go. Right, and I've chipped away at the mountain side, and as you see, needs a bit of a clean up, but those steps do fit in there just. Needs a little bit more opening here, but they're pretty much in there. I'm going to clean this out, open that up, and install the steps. Right then, I've uh, made the hole slightly larger because the steps were sticking out of the road a little bit. And then I've cleaned it all out. Uh, I've done a test fit. It's very tight, but there are a few sort of gaps between the steps in some places like here. So to attach the steps, I'm going to use decorator's cork, which will hopefully then squeeze into this gap and fill any gaps between the steps and the rock face. So, my decorator's cork. I'm just gonna put a bead either side of this cardboard, just along the top. And then this has the advantage that you also hold it into place as well. So, hold it to this side. Excuse me, let's take off camera, so it's a bit easier. Right then. Decorator's cork applied. And just squeeze that into there. And as you can see, the cork then just squeezes into the edges. It's exposed a little bit in a few places. I just try and fill that gap a little bit more. Bit down there. Bit in there. Bit there. There we are. So I get a cocktail stick. I'm just gonna just uh then manipulate the cork just to get into further further more gaps like here. There we are, it's been a bit tricky, but it will go, it will. There we are. We just need a bit more cork there, I reckon. There we are. I'm just going to tidy that up now. Like that. All the way along, there's no gaps. And then I'll leave it to dry and then I shall come back and paint it. So while I've been waiting for the cork to dry, uh, poor old Fred's got a little confused because what he thought was going to be his back garden now has a big pile of sculptor mould in it. Uh, so while I put the steps in, I looked at the other steps and I thought, yeah, maybe they could be for the back garden, but again, it seems like a hell of a lot of effort to put those steps in there when you've already got some steps at the front, etc. And I thought, well, 
Maybe the station should have a little more purpose for the reason it's here. So this area could be quite popular for ramblers. So I'm now thinking that Fred's garden is going to be cut up and uh, we'll have the border about here. And these steps have actually been put in by the council, which then will lead up to a footpath, which will let, then let ramblers explore the lovely Welsh mountainside and hills. So another thing to wait for dry. Right then, uh, the scalped mould is now dry, uh, as is the cork. So I've got my usual palette of uh, raw umber, burnt umber, black and white. Just gonna mix these colors in and blend this new additions into the scenery. If only I could remember how I did it before. Big old time lapse. Right then, uh, that's the sculpt mould painted. Uh, I think it's blended in quite nicely actually. It's a bit shiny at the moon while it's wet. But uh, I'm sure as soon as that dries, that'll blend in with the rest of the scenery. Uh, the stairs are there. I've done them in a slightly lighter sort of slate, greyish colour. As you know, they're a newer instalment, obviously. They were never naturally there. That would just be ludicrous. And then I've done the other steps for the cottage. And again, in a lighter grey, similar to the roof tiles. And I think that's um, fitted into the scenery quite well as well. So I'm happy with that. I think it's time to start giving the cottage a garden. Okay, right then. The house has been removed to allow the installation of the fence. The fence is a uh, Hornby um, wooden post fence. I've had this for years and I've been on many layouts. I really like this stuff, although it's an absolute terror to try and cut. It's really thick plastic. I use a razor saw at the end. Um, now, the other thing I've sort of done wrong is. I started on the front first, which has resulted in a tree being knocked off because I'm actually standing on a chair to reach this far back uh, to try and avoid knocking anything else off. But there we are. Something to learn for the future. Uh, House-wise then, uh, I've drawn around it roughly. I don't know if you can make that out. There's a pencil line just going around the edge there. It's not a massive gap at the back. There is enough for the lavvy and a little gap for people to get by. So that's where the toilet's going to go. I'll probably just give them a little shed. Now the kit came with this stone flooring, so I'm going to cut it to size, fit it on the back, and I'll probably put a little bit at the front, and then I'll have gardens on the sides of the cottages. Well, that's the plan anyway. All right, here we are then. I've uh, now painted the stone slabs, cut them out, and glued them to each side of the cottage which actually makes modelling a lot easier now because it means I can actually work away from the layout and glue on the bits like the gates and the lavvies so I can work around what I've modelled. Uh, the stones are various colours I've used. So I've got rail match slate on there, um, Ravel's stone grey, um, this one is olive grey, greyish blue I'm trying not to destroy the cottage by smacking it with other things and then a bit of sleeper grime as well which is the you sort of see the little brown in the summer stones there so I try to keep it the same colour as sort of similar to the roof but obviously it's going to get dirtier it's on the floor and then similar to the scenery on the layout so I've done the same on the back just going to let the glue set and then I'm going to start adding the bits like the gates and the lavvies Oh, and one more thing to mention, the wash of neutral grey was used in the gaps between and then it's just uh, diluted with some thinners and then brushed across the top just to sort of give it a bit of weathering. Okay, I want uh, a couple of sheds to go in the back gardens of the uh, cottages. One here and I'll probably have the other one on the other side just off in the grassed area. Um, 
So I'm going to make a corrugated shed for one of them. So I've just got this um, embossed card, which is obviously corrugated. And I cut it to shape for the shed. I'm going to use these corner pieces that were left over from this kit. And I'm just going to put this together, have a little tiny shed. Uh, it's about the same width as the toilet. And then I've just gone and got a knife, put a line, uh, cut in a line in there, and then just ran a triangular file just to make, create an edge for the uh, illusion that there's a door there. Here we are, the roof is now on the shed. I've then used a bit of micro strip to make some guttering, um, a bit of plastic rodding to make a down pipe. Now you might think, well, why is it only halfway down? That's because I've got a water butt I'm gonna put underneath there. And then I've also used the micro strip to do some hinges and a door handle. So I think that should come out pretty well. I'm gonna give it a coat of paint now. Here we are then, that's the shed has been given a coat of uh, blue. So I put a light blue undercoat underneath and then topped it with um, Tamiya Royal Blue to sort of give it that faded effect. Uh, I've done the water butt, still waiting for the glue inside to dry. I've put a bit of um, weather wash in there, but it's sort of not quite gone the way I wanted, so we'll see how that turns out when it dries. But otherwise, yeah, a uh, rust wash and some neutral grey wash over the shed. Uh, quite happy with that, so I'm going to install that onto the back of the house. With the corrugated shed built, I decided that the other garden needed a shed. I tried to find something suitable, but couldn't really find anything. So, I took some plastic guard, glued it together, added some micro strip. Add some more micro strip, put a roof on it, and distress the micro strip to come out like this. Here we are. Then I've primed up the shed and the coal bunker. Uh, the shed's come out really well. I dragged a file across the micro strip to try and give it a wood grain effect. I'm not quite sure the camera can pick it up. I think you can just see it there by the hinges. That's turned out really well. So I'm hoping that when I paint it, sort of the uh, layers of paint won't make that disappear because that's quite effective. So that's my shed, that's my coal bunker, I'm quite pleased with that, that's come out quite nicely. And uh, yeah, so now to give them a coat of paint. I painted the shed and the coal bunker in my usual collection of weathered wood life colour paints. I then put the coal bunker behind the cottage and used a bit of black weathering powder to represent the coal dust. Okay, right, I've uh, put the house back in place, just temporary. As we can see, there's a little bit of a gap under the cottage now I've raised up with this paving slab. Uh, I've put the little Westie in, so he lives here at the black door and at the green door. On the windowsill is a little tabby cat, so that's what he's looking at. Uh, and then my other garden shed that I've built, that I put in the back. They also have a water butt with a drain pipe going off the back. Um, as I say, I think I'm going to put a little chicken coop in here, so I just have some, uh, just running around this side of the garden, a bit more untidy, I think, and then this will sort of be a bit more of a tidier garden, sort of chalk and cheese neighbours, I suppose. But that's the cottages so far. Right, uh, I am pretty much happy with the rear of the cottage. I don't think I need to do any more work to it. Nice little scene going on the back there. Not that you're ever going to see it. So, time to put the cottage back in place. Now, as I pointed out, we've got a gap underneath here now where the uh, cottage is sitting on the paving slabs. So what I'm going to do, I've got to thread the wires back through and I'm going to get some decorator's cork and I'm just going to run a bead of cork just underneath the house. So when I sit it back down, that should hopefully fill in the gaps around there and hold the cottages in place. So that's the plan. So 
There we are. I've bedded the house in with uh, the cork. Uh, I naively thought putting a bead underneath it would just do it and then plonk it down. But as you can see on the time lapse, that didn't work very well. And the uh, wires have caused me a bit of aggro, which is one of the reasons I had to move the layout. So I could pull them out straight and then pull the house flat. But that should bed in nicely. Just let it dry and then I'm going to blend it in with the scenery. And uh, yeah, we'll never know that that cork was there. Right, well, while I'm waiting for the uh, cork to dry, I've decided to work on a few details for the garden. So, as I say, um, I think the neighbours are going to be very chalk and cheese. One of them a very lovely tidy garden, the other one a bit scruffy. Um, so, I've got some various parts out of my scrap box to make um, sort of bits and bobs around the uh, garden. I've cut up some corrugated sheet there for a bit of corrugated iron, sort of left lying around. Um, these bits came from, I don't know, a random kit i got given a lots of random pieces a long time ago um from someone i worked with who uh, knew someone that had sort of passed on and basically had a box of scraps so i, I sort of took the best scraps out of there uh for what they could be useful so i mean like this i'm gonna make that a windowsill planter uh probably make that little drinking bowl or something for the uh, chickens or the dog uh, and then i've got these uh brake um pumps oh, i forgot what they're called now anyway Whatever, they're for brakes on the bottom one side of a chassis. Uh, but I thought they'd be quite good uh, plant pots. Just cut the bottom off and obviously paint them up. And then I've got this uh, old Cooper Craft kit, which has been lying around in my uh, kit box for a very long time. Uh, for, I thought, well, there's definitely some useful implements on there. Uh, garden fork and a spade. So um, give them a go as well. Right, uh, carrying on with this garden then, I've um, painted the cork, as you can see it's blended in nicely, and the uh, cottages are now look part of the uh, landscape, not just floating above with a little sort of bit of daylight underneath. Um, so I'm going to do the garden here, I've cut this bit of sandpaper out, which is 100 grade. That's the third attempt, by the way, because the other two. <sighs> Where, well, yeah, I just, I just can't, you know, they're going that way. But, uh, yeah, I just couldn't get my brain to get the angle the right way round, even on the second attempt. Got there in the end. So, just got a bit of, yeah, 100 grade sandpaper. I'm going to pop it in here. And this is going to basically be the area where the chickens are going to be kept. And then I've got my shed, I've you know, scratch built. Uh, I've added a water butt to it as well, a bit of drain pipe. That's going to go there. I've got a chicken coop. Again, scratch built. I used balsa wood for that. Um, and what it, that was, if I can find it, which I can't now, which is difficult whilst I'm recording. But originally it was four pieces of balsa wood I'd put glued together and then I'd sanded this down, which I was going to try and turn into a, the, the original garden shed, but it looked awful. But I thought, well, why not just cut the top off and turn it into a chicken coop? And that's come out quite well. So I just added a couple of matchstick legs and then a little bit of balsa wood on the front and a bit of card for the door. I think mean, that looks all right. So I've got that. got a wheelbarrow. Uh, this is the clock off the um, random bits that I painted up and I've just stuck a bit of uh, glue and glaze in there for look like water so that's like a little water bowl for the chickens and then I've just got some matchsticks that I've dirtied up and again I've sort of rust affected this corrugated iron so it's just it's like you know they're more of a garden of people that aren't really gardeners and just sort of just use it as a bit of a dumping ground so I'm gonna glue all this in place uh, and then probably a bit of grass around here, put the fence in, and that should be uh, Black Doors Cottage and its garden done. Well, I've decided just to plough on with these gardens, and I've now completed them. And as you can see, I wanted the chalk and cheese neighbours, so to speak, and we've got one very pristine garden. And then a very scruffy garden on the other side. I'll just take you in for a closer look. 
So we'll start with the scruffy garden. Um, unfortunately, my chickens haven't arrived in the post yet. Uh, I was hoping to get them on today, but uh, they're coming tomorrow apparently. So it's a bit unfortunate, but I will be able to finish the scene tomorrow. Uh, just not in time for me finishing this video. However, here's the uh, the shed now in place, the wheelbarrow, the clock. As I said, I put a bit of glue and glaze in to look like water. There's the chicken coop. Then I've got the various debris which has been dumped on this very unkept lawn. So I've used a lot of um, sort of a mixture of six mil and eight mil uh, static grass, and then just put some of the autumn static grass over the top, and then a bit of uh, ground cover as well. Few weeds around the front. There's old Terry the Terrier yapping away at Millicent the cat next door. And she sits sitting above the planter that I've made. And again, that's just using a bit of flock and scenic materials in there to look like flowers. Coming into the garden, we've got various plants growing in the border. Um, and I've just used some of the bush summer plants that I showed you in a previous video. Uh, and then we've got various other bits of lynching with flock attached to them. Uh, again, those are what I knocked up in the other video and I've just sort of cut little snippets off uh, and then use this larger bush to go in the middle here. And then over by the side of the house, we've got uh, a pavement. I made that up using Metcalf um, paving slabs, which come out quite nicely. And then it's got a bit of a gap where the pavement is to the house. Just decided to use that bit of dirt for a little tiny allotment. So on this side we've got some runner beans. I uh, knocked up the poles just using some uh, uh, brown rodding. And then again it's the bush, uh, late summer plants to represent the runner beans that are just dying out because obviously summer's over. And on this side we've got some turnips that are ready to be pulled up. Uh, I've also made a washing line as I said I was going to do. So you can see that there, it's just a couple of matchsticks with a bit of a very thin um, rodding glue to that and then there's the garden tools that I painted up from the Cooper craft kit just lying against the fence and the shed there so that's the two gardens uh, I've got the fence all round there and I'm quite pleased that's turned out I'll probably move on to the church next well that's it for this episode at Ford Didbrid I uh, hope you've enjoyed it uh, I certainly enjoyed doing the garden I know I haven't filmed everything I've done here but it's just really a case of just gluing bits down um it's come out really well I'm really pleased I'm uh, especially happy with the contrasting gardens uh and as I say next time I'm probably going to start concentrating on the church around that area uh once that's done I can then just sort of do the back hills and then work on the river and I'm pretty much getting there now so until next time uh, if you like the video, then click the like button. Most appreciated. If you really liked it, then click the subscribe button. And hopefully, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.